Well, Christmas Custer from 680 joins us now. What a wet Friday to end the week, Chris. Yeah, awful, awful, and awful on markets, too, as it turns out. Pretty much. What's going on? Well, investors unloaded stocks today. All things considered, though, pretty modest declines, although as far as U.S. markets go, the worst one-day drops for November. Uh, the worst performer on a percentage basis, the NASDAQ off by one and a half percent. All North American markets, though, did see gains this week. The TSX up by about a percent. The Dow, the big winner, higher by 2.8 percent. So the best week for the Dow since March. Some stocks of note on Bay Street. Bombardier did see a rebound after taking a hit yesterday. Marijuana stocks lower on Bay Street for a second straight day. And then in the U.S., share and McDonald's and Coca-Cola both hit 52-week highs. Now, both are Dow components, but didn't help the Dow today. Okay, and not a great week for oil here in Canada either. Crude continuing to struggle. Yes, and crude officially entered bear market territory as of yesterday. It was lower today for a tenth straight day, so matched the longest losing streak since 1984. Uh, it closed at its lowest level since early March. Now, there is a bright spot here. Even with U.S. oil lower today, the Canadian crude index was up by about 4%. So the discount between U.S. and Canadian oil has uh, narrowed. And I'm told there are a few reasons for that. I spoke to Tim Pickering, the CIO at Auspice Capital. Canadian producers actually throttling back the amount of production that they have. So that's a pretty big deal. There was another bit of news uh, from Enbridge, and in their Q3 investor presentation, they talked about their expectations for what's called Line 3 and its capacity that we're expecting to come on in late 2019 or early 2020. They expect that to not be 450,000 barrels a day, but over 800,000 barrels a day. And he is expecting the discount to narrow as we go forward, getting a little closer to the average of about $18. Today it was about $33, which is still pretty bad, but it's off the high. And Chris, there's a ruling on the Keystone XL pipeline <laughs> from south of the border now. Yes, it seems this uh, much-delayed project just got delayed again. The Canadian proponent, though, of the $10 billion Keystone XL crude pipeline says it remains committed to the uh, project. The comment from TransCanada comes after this U.S. judge's ruling that it must pass a further environmental review. Now, again, uh, I spoke to Tim Pickering at uh, Auspice Capital about this. He insists it will get built. Shares in TransCanada today down by 1.7 percent. Now, as well, a spokesman for the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers says this delay will cost the Canadian industry millions. Uh, progress on these pipelines would actually help drain this glut of oil in Western Canada, which is uh, putting all this pressure on the Canadian crude index would allow the price to come back up. It's just an ongoing vicious circle. It certainly is, and yeah. it's been, I, I sense it will continue to be an ongoing vicious circle. Yeah, but we should see incremental improvement going forward. All right, Chris. And Disney, last but not least, Disney is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Netflix with their new streaming service. That's right. It's going to be called Disney Plus. This announcement, part of the earnings report yesterday. Uh, Disney Plus, it'll feature at least five content channels, including Pixar and Star Wars. We're expecting to get uh, more details in the spring. Uh, shares in Disney, by the way, hit an all-time high today of $120 on this impending competition. Shares in Netflix off by 4.5%. Uh, fear not, though, the stock's still higher by 58% year-to-date. All right, they're not hurting that badly, No, are they? no, no, no. <laughs> All right, Chris, have a wonderful weekend on this wet Friday Eve. Yes, we'll see you next yes. week. Stay dry. You too.